about that. Uh, the spring open leaderboard is open. All right, let's get into some on-shape 3D modeling, some sheet metal. Here we go. This is Victor K's favorite part. 23T81 flared bracket. Uh, kind of a tricky part here. You can see here um, that we tried our best in the 2D print to let people know kind of what to expect and how to uh, avoid, you know, avoid running outside of spec. Probably the biggest part of that is this region right here, this bend region flared wall. So having this section here straight and then having this flare out is key. If you start flaring out too early, you're going to end up too wide on your dimension down here at the bottom. So uh, definitely a fun part, a, a challenging part. And when this one came up in the tournament, it was Victor K versus Mons. Uh, there were some questions from the co-commentary of whether or not Onshape could even handle a part like this in sheet metal. And the answer is absolutely Onshape can handle it in sheet metal. And we're going to see a demonstration of that right now. Now, Airwick is an absolute Onshape genius, and I'm sure that he will have some... Uh, some feedback for me. One thing that Airwork does that I really enjoy is he takes my models after I after I kind of struggle my way through them, and then he just redoes them on his YouTube channel and shows how a professional would would model this using Onshape. And so it's really cool, and that you can really learn a lot if you're if you're trying to learn anything about Onshape. Be sure to check out uh, on my videos. If Airwork leaves a YouTube comment, look at his video, uh, and uh, and you'll see kind of the the, cor the the correct way to do it, the optimal way to do it. But I'm going to create this model here. You know, again, just like I mentioned in the previous example i'm going to look at the model i'm going to come up with a game plan one of my game plans is going to be to recognize that there's symmetry in this direction and there's symmetry in this direction and there's symmetry down here in this lower view in that same direction so that means that i could probably not model all of this and just focus on this one corner here so that's how I'm going to do it, and then I'm going to mirror and mirror at the end, and that should make things at least a little bit easier for me to create this model. I also mentioned that there's this kind of flare out section here. It flares out at 26 degrees, um, and then that flare out section starts here. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to start with the first extrusion as a, a, a sheet metal extrusion, but instead of just going to 80, I'm going to go beyond that. I'm going to go to like 120. This looks like it should be about 110 here in this view, and then after after I've got that out to 120, I'm going to create a cut extrude. So I'll create a cut extrude that looks like this. And that way I can kind of cut away that flared area um, instead of uh, maybe like modeling it at 80 and trying to add that. I'm going to just model it wide and then cut that extra area away and see if that gets me pretty close. I'm also going to be a little concerned about what's going on down here in this section. Uh, if I were to create that cutaway, I've got this kind of extra... A little corner sticking out here so i think what i'm going to do is i'm going to first get the 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 flange that's you know the, the kind of the top section of the model and then this flange is sticking down here but i'm not going to create this extra geometry that's sticking off the side here so my first sketch is going to look just like this these two lines bring that out cut off that flared region and then i'll go back in and add another flange that comes in this way so that should help me to avoid, you know, running into a challenge with regards to inadvertently lopping off this little sharp corner here. These are just kind of things that you learn over time when you do a lot of 3D CAD. You kind of learn how to look at a model, whether it's a physical part or whether it's a, a 2D print, and kind of like unbuild it in your head and imagine what the feature tree is going to look like. And then you go through and actually try to create the model. So let's get into it here in Onshape. I'm gonna close this model. If you've got the free version of Onshape or the paid version of Onshape, you can do a search in the public space and you'll be able to find this, this document, 23-T-81-flared bracket. And uh, then you can take a look and you could, you know, you could see if uh, uh, you're, you know, you're coming up with the same results that I'm coming up with. Or if you get stuck, you can uh, you can kind of look through the feature tree that I've created here in Onshape. So I'm going to start out by creating just these two lines, just like I talked about in the game plan. I'm going to make sure that this is uh, horizontal, which it is. I can see from that relationship that shows up there. I'm going to create a dimension here that goes to the sharp and goes here to the center of the model. And that is going to be 
uh, 170 over two, 170 to the sharps. Going to create a dimension that goes from the floor up to the very top of the model. That's going to be at 65. And I'm going to create an angle dimension here. And that angle dimension is going to be 60 degrees. Gives me a nice fully defined sketch. Going to hit the green check mark. And I'm going to take that fully defined sketch and turn it into a sheet metal model using the extrude option. So I'm going to take this geometry, this geometry here, extrude it to a thickness of four millimeters with a radius of six millimeters. So four by six. And then I'm going to bring this out to 120 over two. That should give me enough room to kind of cut that thing down. The last thing I want to look at is the direction of the sheet metal. The dimension that I put in here for 65 is from the floor to the peak of the sheet metal or to the, the top of that top surface. So this needs to go the other direction. So whenever you're doing sheet metal, you have to look out for the direction of your sheet metal. And that option is right here in on shape. So now I've created that first shape. Now I'm going to pick this face here, begin a sketch, orient my view, and I'm going to create that second shape, which is the kind of flaring off of that geometry. So just create this second shape here to look something like this, kind of flare off that geometry with that second, uh, second shape there. And uh, then I'm going to be able to put in my dimensions. So this is going to be 80 over two, or I can actually, I can actually just do that in my head. I don't mean to flex or anything, but I can figure that out in my head. Um, I'm going to say this is 26 over two, so that's going to be 13. And then I'm going to jump into an extrude command here and remove that material. And you can see in on shape, they give you a nice preview of what that remove is going to look like. So I'm going to say that this is going to go through all, kind of remove that whole section there. And there we go. That gives us that nice. Uh, 40 millimeter wide up top there and then that flare out at 26 degrees so now i'm going to pick this edge <clears throat> excuse me i'm going to pick this edge here one thing that i'm going to do just to kind of prep this feature is i'm going to get my um my top plane aligned here because the distance from the the top of the model down to the lower flange of the model should be that 65 so when i make this lower flange i want it to be flush with this top plane and so by extending that top plane plane it just kind of gives me a visual cue and that way when I go into the flange command in on shape here I can start making some adjustments to that flange command so I could say this is going to be 90 plus 30 uh, to account for that uh, kind of I guess it would be supplementary angle or complementary angle and then um, I'm going to get normal two here whoops 120 and then I'm going to get normal two here and I'm going to change my option here for the flange position and by changing this option, I can maybe figure out which one is going to give me that flange flush to that plane. So just having that plane there, I can just kind of iteratively go through and look at the different flange options until I get the right one just by making that flange, that plane a little bit wider. So that's something that, that we sometimes do in um, in 3D CAD. And then for the, the stop point of this flange, I'm going to say the stop point is going to be offset from the middle plane here and that that offset is going to be 75, so 150 over 2. So that gives me that flange sticking out of the bottom. I think that looks pretty good. Um, I could do a quick sanity check here and make sure that this distance, so if I pick here on this edge and then I look down here in the in the graphics area, that distance is 56. If we remember from the print, there is a reference dimension here that says that this should be about 112. So 56 times two is 112. So I'm pretty much in line with what that reference dimension is. So just kind of like a quick sanity check there as I'm going through and creating this model. Now this next flange here is a little bit more tricky. Uh, I pick this edge here, I jump into the flange command, I bring a flange off of this thing. I'm gonna say this one's gonna bend to the hold line. So that means the bend is gonna start right there where that original line is. And then the uh, flange length is gonna be a partial flange. So this is gonna go to a distance of uh, 110 over two. So 55 there, or um, uh, actually that should be from the other end. Let's see here. Ch -ch -ch -ch. That's not the correct distance there for my flange, uh, my flange offset there. So maybe what I'll do is I'll flip the where the flange is starting from, and then I could maybe make that offset uh, up to entity with offset, and I could go to here. Actually, no, we do want that off from there. Okay, there we go, and then make that 55. There we go. That's what we wanted. Uh, so sometimes you just got to kind of adjust those different um, parameters until you get what you want. And then my bend angle for this one is going to be at uh, 75 for the bend angle. And then this is where it gets tricky. The length of this segment right here, the straight segment, is supposed to be 20 millimeters. So here on this uh, on this print, we can see that it's supposed to be 20 millimeters, the length of that kind of straight section to the bend, this little straight line here. And so the way that I usually do something like this, if, if I can't figure out a good elegant solution to let the software 
do it for me. What I'll usually do is just kind of fire it in there with the default and then click on that edge. So I just clicked on this edge here and then I look at some kind of a measure command. So in Onshape or in SolidWorks or whatever you're using, it's 17.33. So if we take 20 minus 17.33, then that leaves us with 2.67. So what we could do is we could edit that flange there, we could edit that flange, and we could just add the 2.67 to this 25 dimension here. So we could do, you know, 27.67. I know that's not like a, a crazy dynamic solution using the software and equations and stuff like that, but it gives you the result you need and it lets you get, you know, get the model over to the customer. And sometimes that's that's really the name of the game. It's just getting that model over to the customer. So just kind of something to, to think about. It doesn't always have to be like crazy dynamic equations where you're leveraging the, the parametric uh, capabilities of the software. Sometimes you can just kind of brute force your way through. So this is going to have a radius of 14 here. We're going to add that fillet radius there. There we go. Now we get to uh, the next tricky area of this model, which is that this, this kind of um, slotted shape here and this slotted shape here don't perfectly line up. So I can't just fire a through cut. So what you have to do is kind of like a stepped approach to get that to, to go through both segments. So what I'll do is I'll start out here on the top of the model and I'll create uh, a slotted shape here. I'll just come all the way around with this slotted shape here. And then what we'll do is we'll take this and drop it so it's nice and centered. And we'll give that the designated radius here of 12 millimeters. And then the location of that is uh, 140 over 2, so 70. And uh, and then what we can do is we can take that and we can cut extrude it down into the model. We could probably even cut extrude it all the way down to this point. So we could do extrude here and we're going to remove that down and then we could either type in a distance like 40 millimeters or we could even go all the way down to that point. Either way, the point is we're not going to go through the whole model and then we're going to create a second cut here. So we could create a cut here on this very bottom surface, this surface here. Um, and then that second cut is going to use the same, the same kind of geometry here. So we're going to do line, arc, line coming back and touching that end point to activate that line arc line command, close that off. And then uh, again, we'll bring this out to here. We could say that this point and this line here are coincident. We could say that um, uh, this point and this line here are coincident. And uh, then we can put in that final dimension. So that final dimension is gonna be from this point and this point here. And that distance is gonna be uh, 190 over 2. And then what we could do is we can take that and we can do a remove and we can we can really just fire that one through all. So you do that's kind of the trick to that feature. You have to do it as a two-step process. I don't think there's a way you can just get that whole thing at once. I know I saw some of the runners trying to do it by like flattening that sheet metal and then doing it as a slot. Uh, but I don't think there's a there's a good clean way to do that. And a question came in here from Amir, can on shape cut up to surface? Yep, absolutely. You can do up to surface. It's in that end condition. I'll show you here with this feature. So now this final feature is the rectangular cut up top to create a relief for the uh, that fly, final flange that's kind of sticking up. So this is 30, a 30 by 30 rectangle, but we're only doing half of it in this direction. So it's going to be 15 in that direction. And then this is also offset. Uh, by 30 so again it's only half so we're offsetting that by 15 and then we're going to do an extrude cut and then you can see here that in the end conditions in on shape we could do that as up to face and then pick this surface here and that would be like your up to surface end condition uh amir so yep you can do up to surface for sure and then this final feature here i always manage to uh, uh struggle with this feature regardless of what cad system i'm using creating this final like a uh, tabbed area that's sticking up out of the top here uh, just because it partially because the way it's dimensioned uh, but it's supposed to stick up 20 millimeters total off of uh, off of the edge here so we'll take this edge here we'll do a flange uh, we're gonna reverse the direction of that flange I think it's gonna actually be 24 because it's using the the material thickness as well because I picked that lower edge so it's gonna be 24 we're gonna do that using the hold line so it bends from the original location and then this is gonna be a partial flange partial flange and that partial flange distance is going to be um i think if we do five then it gives us that gap of five yeah that's what we wanted there 
So there we go. I didn't actually struggle with it. It wasn't that bad. Um, and then we can pick this face here, and this is going to have a uh, a hole. That's going to be nine millimeters, and that is going to be at a distance from the floor. Here you can see I can pick that center point, and I can just pick the top plane from the tree. And that way I can get that dimension without having to go and find the top plane. That's going to be 77. And then that's going to be a remove. And we'll make that through all. And then we can finish up here with a fillet of 7 millimeters on that top edge there. There we go. And now we are ready to take this thing and mirror it. So this is going to be mirror. We're going to mirror the entire part about this face here. And this is going to be merged together. So we do an add. And then we're going to do another mirror here. And we're going to mirror the entire part about this face here. And we want to do add so that those are merged together. And if we look over here in our sheet metal table view, we can see there's what the flat pattern looks like. So I think that flat pattern looks pretty good. Uh, that's pretty much what I was expecting to see. And then what we could do is we can assign our material. So assign material. And the material here is going to be from the Too Tall Toby library and... 1060 okay didn't think it was that all right and then the the answer we're coming up with here is 367 or 368 grams and that is correct i had to go and look at my answer sheet so 368 grams is correct and that is a sheet metal kind of tutorial walkthrough speed run whatever you want to call it how to create that model in on shape using sheet metal yes it can be done uh, that's the technique that I would use. If you have any thoughts on how I can maybe do that better, let me know uh, down in the comments. Let me know in the chat. And I uh, hope you guys enjoyed that little on-shape tutorial of how to build this 23T81 flared bracket. Little sheet metal, sheet metal action there for everybody. All righty. And we are down to the last five minutes of the live stream. If you guys